dear students continuing with our lecture series on named reaction this is our 24th lecture and in today's lecture we will discuss the details about hans dihydropyridine synthesis uh, this reaction uh, basically uh, is ultimately used for the synthesis of pyridines therefore this is also called as hans pyridine synthesis or uh, hans dihydropyridine synthesis because uh, in the first step uh, we synthesize dihydropyridines which are further oxidized to pyridines and uh, this reaction is a multi component reaction where carbonyl compounds they react with uh, beta keto esters in presence of some nitrogen source like uh, ammonia or ammonium carbonate or ammonium acetate in the presence of uh, some solvent or even in solventless media using uh, modern methods of synthesis like microwave or ultrasonics under uh, reflux conditions uh, all these uh, components uh, aldehydes or ketones uh, beta keto esters and uh, nitrogen source they condense with each other to give us uh, these types of heterocyclic structures which are dihydro pyridines and these dihyd uh, dihydropyridines they can be oxidized to pyridine derivatives uh, in the presence of uh, oxidizing agents and uh, most commonly used is perchloride when uh, dihydropyridines uh, they are uh, refluxed uh, in presence of perchloride they are converted into pyridine derivatives and uh, basically what happens is uh, in the presence of an oxidizing agent uh, the aromatization of this dihydropyridine ring take place to give us a aromatic structure uh, which is basically uh, the driving force for conversion of dihydropyridines into pyridine systems as far as the mechanism of this reaction is concerned uh, in the first step uh, the beta keto esters uh, they react with the nitrogen source for example if we are using ammonia uh, this uh, ammonia will react with the beta keto ester so this group will interact with ammonia with the elimination of uh, water h2 from here at o from here elimination of water will lead to the formation of this these types of enamine esters and uh, then the second uh, molecule of beta keto ester will react with the carbonyl compound that is aldehyde and uh, Uh, this will act as an active methylene compound because uh, this uh, the hydrogens present on this carbon they are very acidic hydrogens uh, because of the presence of these two electron withdrawing groups present one in case of uh, the keto system and other in case of the ester system so they these protons they can be easily removed and uh, this will act as a carbonyl and can add to the Uh, carbon oxygen bond of the aldehyde and we will get this type of intermediate and then this will undergo dehydration over uh, this places h from here oh from here and we will get alpha beta unsaturated keto esters uh, as the intermediate and these alpha beta unsaturated keto esters they will react with the enamine uh, esters Uh, in such a way that uh, uh, cyclization will take place to give us dihydropyridine systems so in the first step uh, this uh, will interact with this and a intermediate of this type will be formed and then cyclization uh, through uh, nucleophilic attack of this uh, amine to the carbonyl system and a cyclic structure will be formed then dehydration will take place and we will get dihydro 
pyridines as the product. So this is how the beta keto esters, carbonyl compounds and nitrogen source, they will condense with each other under multi-component reaction to give us dihydropyridines as the product. Uh, many important applications uh, are there uh, for this reaction, uh, hence uh, dihydropyridine synthesis under different conditions. Uh, the product formed is same in all the cases. For example, if aldehydes and beta ketoesters, two equivalents of beta ketoesters, uh, they are reacted with, uh, in the presence of uh, ammonium acetate as uh, uh, the nitrogen source in presence of paratol in sulfonic acid 0.1 equivalent uh, in presence of uh, ultrasound uh, sonochemical conditions uh, these are converted into dihydropyridine systems then another uh, mode of action is uh, that these substrate in presence of ammonium acetate tct uh, trichloro uh, triazine or cyanuric acid this is known as uh, trichlorotriazine uh, at room temperature for one hour uh, for one hour when these uh, substrates uh, are acted under these conditions and then also they are converted into dihydropyridine uh, derivatives similarly if tct is replaced by uh, boron compound phenyl boronic acid then also uh, the condensation uh, through multi-component uh, reaction lead to the formation of dihydropyridines. Then we can uh, directly synthesize hence pyridine uh, derivatives if uh, we react this uh, in the presence of ammonium acetate as nitrogen source and 10% palladium on charcoal and uh, in presence of kit and clay. Uh, under microwave conditions then uh, at 110 degree centigrade uh, for 90 to 130 minutes then uh, instead of dihydropyridines we will directly get uh, pyridine derivatives uh, from the multi-component reaction of uh, these compounds. Uh, then uh, some modifications uh, they have also been reported uh, that uh, if aldehyde uh, is replaced by anthocyl hydrazones, then uh, we don't need to add the nitrogen source uh, in addition uh, to the beta ketoesters. So beta ketoesters on direct reaction with anthocyl hydrazones uh, in presence of anhydrous aluminium chloride as catalyst, they can be directly converted into uh, and uh, dihydropyridine derivatives and then uh, removal of this group can lead to uh, replace this group by hydrogen and we can get dihydropyridine derivatives. Then uh, another method uh, reported uh, is that uh, uh, when uh, we can use aldehydes and uh, diketones uh, one molecule of diketone and one molecule of uh, beta ketoesters so uh, these modifications also can lead to the formation of polyhydroquinoline derivatives so uh, this is uh, this part is uh, dihydropyridine derivative but uh, the bicyclic uh, products they are formed polyhydroquinoline derivatives uh, they can be synthesized through hence uh, reaction and if we modify the condition just uh, uh, using uh, one equivalent of this instead of two equivalent and the another equivalent is used for beta diketones so uh, this will lead to the formation of polyhydroquinoline derivatives as the product and uh, the catalyst used is uh, terbium uh, triflate as the catalyst. Uh, then uh, uh, in uh, one uh, common example for the synthesis of uh, nifedipine, uh, which is a, a drug used uh, uh, very uh, frequently uh, when orthonitrobenzaldehyde uh, is condensed with uh, 
इथाइल इथाइल एसिटो एसिटेट इन प्रेजेंस ऑफ अमोनिया देन नोफिडिपिन व्हिच इज ए डाइहाइड्रोपिरिटिन डेरिवेटिव कैन बी सिंथेसाइज्ड वेरी इजीली एंड रिसेंटली दिस सिलिका बेस्ड सल्फोनिक एसिड्स दे हैव बीन यूज्ड एज कैटलिस्ट फॉर दिस हैंस डाइहाइड्रोपिरिडिन सिंथेसिस so when aldehydes and beta keto esters uh, they are reacted in presence of nitrogen source in presence of uh, silica sulfonic acid catalyst then also we can uh, synthesize uh, uh, dihydropyridine derivatives in uh, good yields then uh, recently uh, beta amino ketones aromatic aldehydes and beta keto esters so this is again uh, a slight modification of the hans reaction so here uh, instead of using two equivalents of beta keto ester we are using one equivalent of beta keto ester and one equivalent of beta amino ketone uh, and when these are reacted in presence of a strong base like sodium ethoxide in ethanol as a solvent then a multi component uh, reaction take place between these three substrates to give us these types of dihydropyridine derivatives as the product and these uh, dihydropyridine derivatives so synthesized uh, they are very uh, biologically active and uh, they are uh, being used as drugs in some cases uh, these are the references which have been used for preparing this lecture thank you very much